You know the vibes. Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast brought to you by NBA 2K24. It's myself, Momoonsi, alongside me as always, the three-time NBA champion, BJ Armstrong, former hey. member of the Orlando Magic, Mr. BJ Armstrong. Hey. How, are you, how are you doing after the Game 7? Hey, you know, Bo, the first half, I was feeling really good. The whole, the whole you know, world was feeling really good. I was feeling really good. Except for the Cavs fans. Except for the Cavs fans. And listen, they were up. What did they get up? 20 or something more? 18, 17, 18. 18, 20 points. They came out just like I thought they would. They were very confident. It, 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 they were role playing downhill, came out swinging. However, Mo, you could see in the second half, in particular, the inexperience of this team. And, you know, that's why you play a game seven. It is really, really difficult to win a game seven, mm -hmm. um, especially on the road. It's, it's hard, really hard to do. But for one half, this Orlando Magic team, they were they were terrific. I mean, well, they just came out like gangbusters, right? They came out yeah. just playing. Uh, but well, they started the, the, the game by shooting the lights out, and then that shooting yeah. fell off because they're not a team that shoots and, the three ball well, and right. that's something that they're going to have to address this summer because outside of Paolo Banquero, who had 38 points, they didn't really get any scoring contributions. Franz Wagner had one of the worst Game 7s ever played. He was 1-15 of from the field with mm -hmm. six points. He um, picked up some early fouls, which may have thrown off his rhythm, but they really couldn't get much scoring from elsewhere. Like I said, Paolo had 38 and you look at the rest of the team, Wendell Carter had 13, Sucks had 10, and no one else even cracked double digits. Whereas on the other hand, the Cavaliers, Donovan Mitchell had a really slow start to the game, but he turned yeah. up in the second half, finished with mm -hmm. 39 points on 27 shots, and they got 15 off the bench. Karis LeVert came in, gave them some energy, really really played nicely for them. Max Struess hit three threes for 13 points. Evan Mobley gave them 10 and 16. Darius Garland, quiet game for him. He really struggled, but he had 12 points as well, and that's just... You know, five guys that get into double figures. The other team had three guys that got into double figures. And it's just a math equation from there. And Orlando Magic had 17 turnovers in this game. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, fans of Orlando are going to be disappointed. But no one expected them to be in this position. They have That's won right. this series purely of having home court advantage. And that home court advantage was one game. So a right. bounce here and a player missing the game because he's injured there. And it was the other way around. And the Magic had home court. I 100% believe they would be advancing to the next round of the playoffs. However, yeah, the Orlando, here yeah. we are. The Orlando Magic have nothing to hold their heads down about. They they were, this was a great year for them. Those guys gained valuable experience, including a game seven. I mean, mm -hmm. So the, the future looks really bright down there in Orlando. I think and, they're and, going to be playing your favorite song. They're going yep, to be your yep, favorite song yep. now. It's going to be played. So they, they, their future is is bright. Uh, clearly, they have some things they have to address. One of those things would be shooting. You uh, still which, got your magic jersey? Well, I I, I'm all, I got one problem. I can't move. I can't get open. <laughs> Stand <laughs> so, in the corner. You're good. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't get open. But I think they, 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 they have some... They have a great core of young players. They, they have a star in Paolo Banquero, 38 points. I think that's the most points in a player his age or younger since Kobe or LeBron were the same age. And he did it on yeah. a better on the same amount of shots as well. Um, right. um but I, I will say this. I would I I I don't like to get too far ahead because in the end, you know, 38 points is a lot, 16 rebounds is a lot. And he looks like all the indications are pointing to being a star player. However, Mo, what's different about next year is the expectations. And yep. that's a different ball game. Yep, because okay? now a, you've been a, to a game seven in the first round, your fan base is expecting you to get to the you, second you, round. You said, right. Yes, and that's it. And, and we don't know how, but we don't know how the team, the expectations, clearly they're gonna, now they gotta start paying some of these players. They got to start saying who's in the core, who's not. And this comes with a different responsibility. However, Paulo, he looks like he's going to be a star player. But we'll, let's see how this plays out because you never know how these things are, how they will, how they will turn out. Because playing with the expectations, 
Now, yeah. if he if he makes if he comes back and and they're in the fifth or sixth or play in, now that's a failure of a season. Yeah, but them. here's the thing: you have the expectations, and teams are going to be more aware of Paolo. However, he's making some tough shots. He's creating tough looks for himself. Now, if they can upgrade their roster, add some shooting that should in theory open up more space for Paolo and make his life a little bit easier because he was getting some really tough looks tonight and he was knocking them down, but it's not the easiest offense in the NBA to what, score. What, 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 remember, he is still on a rookie deal. So how he is a max player. What, what, can we agree with that? Yes, yes. Okay. You got, and then you're going to, France looks like he is going to be paid very well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The Wagner kid. Yep. Okay. And then I would assume, I would assume Suggs will probably yep. be another guy. Okay. Again, as you're building the team, because this is for you, you're, if you start going out and paying people now, and then you can't tell your players that you actually drafted, mm -hmm. well, and this is a small market team. So yeah. the construction of this team will be around those guys I would think. But yeah, they're going to extend Wagner and Suggs this offseason, I believe. Or they, or they yes. should at least. And I, if I'm them, I'm not looking at a huge name, right? I'm not trying to throw Paul George a max contract. I'm not trying to go and get Clay Thompson and overpay him to come and join Orlando. You know the guy I, I'd want on my team is Malik Monk. That's who I would want to join this team if I'm the Orlando Magic. Well, I would assume that he would command a nice salary right now. Yeah, but not the same max contract that Paul George would want. Or the money it would take to so prize. So I, I would from think. The I would think. Okay. It, again, from real reports. Let's talk about what the reports say. Paul George probably asked for the max. Again, I don't know this. I'm not preppy. And it it appeared to be that the the Clippers weren't willing to either do the length of the contract, or they couldn't agree on the number. Yeah, I think they they want to tie it up to expire at the same time as Kawhi's. Okay, whatever that is. Okay, what what whatever that is. So then that takes you to if he leaves, if he leaves, you know the the Clippers, then he's got to go to a team that actually has cap space, mm -hmm. like the Detroit Pistons, someplace like that. So it gets a, it's not complicated. It's just getting. So if you were to get a Paul George or someone. Or a Malik Monk. I mean, Malik Monk will command over $25 million a year. Yeah. He will co he, he will command that. I don't know how that works for the Orlando Magic. Mm -hmm. He will command at a minimum $25 a year. That's, that's about where Jordan Poole was at. Yeah, you're just banking on the cap spiking up when the new TV deal gets signed. And then having the money to pay your guys and have another guy on your team. Exactly. You're, 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 but as you know, sometimes, you know, we'll see. But I, I think guys like, like for instance, like for instance, if, if I'm a small market team like that, I'm just talking out loud here and I don't know, and I haven't thought about it really, but since you said it, like a guy like Buddy Hill mm. to me would be like, the right guy because I don't know what he will command, but I know he is capable of outperforming what a mid-level guy would be, which yeah. would be around 12 to 15 million. And he's capable of filling in as a starter. He's an elite shooter and he can play that role at an elite level. And he probably will fit in a two or three year window where one guy is coming off the books because Paulo is going to get the max. Mm -hmm. OK, Paulo to be that's a no brainer. So I would, you know, I'm, I'm looking for guys like that. I'm sure there are others. I, again, that just that name just came to me and yeah. his value isn't as high as probably would be. I think I think Buddy Hill is like a borderline starter in this league. I, I really do. I think he's at that. Elite, I think he's at that level as an elite shooter. Yes, I think so. I agree. Um, but, you know, we'll depending see on which team do. he's on. But yeah. Yes. Yes. I think yeah. he is a knockdown 
I mean, but, he but goes I'm, to the if he goes to the Miami Heat, for instance. Oh yeah, they'll probably teach know. him how to play defense as well. And then it gets really scary. I don't want to see. Don't give them ideas. Now, nah, I know people be listening. Don't be giving them no ideas, B. I don't want to see Hill, a game where Buddy Hill scores ten Hill, threes against us in the playoffs. Yeah, Buddy I don't want to see that. Miami. Buddy Hill goes to Miami. I can tell you this. You know, hey, now he's a max player. You know. All right. <laughs> so the moral of the story is though. Whichever way you slice it, the future is bright for the Orlando Magic. Yes. Whatever yeah, they no, decide we, to do. And they should hold yes. their heads high after yes, a, a first round series that didn't get a lot of promotion, but I watched it and I enjoyed it. I did too. I did Shout too. To and, and, and and Jeff Weltman and all those guys down there, Bravo and 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 and, and Coach Mosley, listen. Facts. That was he he was great. They had a great year. And they, they should enjoy that. They should feel good about this summer. However, know what's coming the following year is expectations. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how young people, players are going to respond. The organization is going to respond. You start doing budget meetings and you start, you know, you start preparing for like playoff games next year. And all of a sudden you don't make the playoffs. Now, <laughs> you know. Yep. Yep. That, We've that's, seen that, it happen before. Yes, we have. So, but right now let's celebrate them. Great job. Game seven. And the Congrats Cavaliers, to the Cavs, yeah. Them. Congrats yep. to the Cavs. The fans were chanting, "We want Boston." We're going to see how that goes. But first, we got to talk about tonight's matchups: the Indiana Pacers and the New York Knicks get their second round series underway. BJ, who you got winning this series, and in how many games? I'm, I'm going to say the Knicks. I'm, I'm going to say the Knicks. I'm going to say the Knicks in six. All right, and the reason I'm going to say six is because. What I saw from the Pacers during the regular season, in particular in early in the season, they were one of the fastest playing teams in the entire NBA. They could score. They had depth. And then as the season wound down at the end of the year, it didn't appear to be the same team. Now, Mo, I don't know what happened. I know Halliburton, it was reported that he was playing through injuries. But he seemed to really slow down at a certain point during the regular season. Mo, did I miss something there? Or yeah, he had an injury. Case? He had an injury. Yes. And then he, he forced himself to play to meet the 65 game requirement mark, which he okay. had a moan about. And then they traded for Siakam and they traded away Buddy Heald, who we were just speaking about. And without Buddy Heald space in the floor, he was getting way more attention from the defense and he wasn't able to get easier looks off. Okay. So whatever the case may be, they, they didn't seem to be like the same team. You know, Obi Toppin came out playing great. He was a starter. Then he went back to the bench. But you like the team. I just don't know what's going on with them. And they don't seem they don't seem to play with that same they have like an energy about them. I remember watching them doing the was it the plan tournament. What is yeah, that what they call the it? The in-season tournament. The in season the in season tournament. And Mo, they were like, oh wow, this team is could be really good. Yep. The and best then something something happened. Offense. Yeah, well, well they changed their whole here. team. They changed their whole team and yeah, had a bit well, of an injury. And and like let's keep it in context. They beat the Bucks in what six games, right? A, a team and without I, Giannis and, and Dame missed a bunch of games know. as well. Like that's what I'm saying. Something doesn't seem right with this group. Well, defensively, right. their their struggles all season long is that they had this fantastic offense and they'd run opponents off the floor and they were putting up like 150 points in games, but their opponents would put up 149 or 151 depending on the night. So. Their team's built on offense, on the offensive side of the ball, and we've seen in the defense, shout out to the Timberwolves, defense wins you games in the NBA right. playoffs. So I'm going and, and to say, so I, I do think because of their depth, I'm going to say they're going to, they, they should win at least a couple games. Yeah. They should win a couple games. I, I think I'm they should say get the Knicks. two at home, and then right. I, I would expect the Knicks to close it out, provided everyone stays healthy. But, but I'm going to say this. If for some reason early on in this series they're able to play competitive, if they if they could be competitive in like the first three games of this series, I think it favors Indiana. And here's why: because they have better depth than the Knicks. The Knicks are their guys; their starters are going to play over forty minutes every yeah. game. Well, the, and, and well, and they that was a hard fought series in the last series with a physical Philly. series. That was a physical series. These guys. Playing 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. At some point, it'll take a toll. Yeah, I don't well, care what you say. At least they don't have to worry about Joel Embiid stamping on them if they go on the ground this time. But, like, if I'm the Indiana Pacers, I'm going all in, fast paced from the tip off of game one. I'm picking up yeah. full court pressure. I'm making these guys work because I don't think on paper you could make a case that the Knicks depth is better. Their coach just doesn't ever use their depth. He just grinds his starters out for 40 plus mm -hmm. minutes a night. Mm -hmm. So, 
if I'm the Indiana Pacers, I'm playing at 100 miles an hour from the very tip off of game one. And I'm going to try and wear these guys down over the course of the series. If we can steal a game in game one or two, come back and defend home court as well. And the longer this series goes, it favors the Pacers because they've just got more bodies to throw at them. And that's right. a big, a, a big amount of work for Jalen Brunson to have to worry about, you know, dealing with all that full court pressure the way that they tried to get to Dame. There, there is a strategy here for the Indiana Pacers to win. It's just a question of what New York does to adjust to that. But speaking of adjusting, how do the Denver Nuggets bounce back from their game two, from their game one defeat in game two tonight against the Minnesota Timberwolves? Well, I, I'm going to tell you what. The first thing is you, you're going to have to figure out a defensive scheme to deal with Mr. Anthony Edwards. I mean, I mean he... Yeah. Now, the it looked like the Denver Nuggets said we're just going to match up with him because they have really good defensive player. I think KCP is a really good defensive player. Aaron Gordon, a really one of the good best defensive player. But Mo, by all accounts, this you, this guy's got to be doubled. Okay, he needs he's he has earned the respect to say you can't defend him with one player. Okay, so I think that's the first thing they're going to have to figure out who they're going to live with shooting open shots. Mm -hmm. I think Mike Conley is a seasoned veteran. Rudy Gobert, he is very capable of playing in that dunkers position. Cat, you can't leave from three. You know, maybe it's McDaniels. Maybe that's the guy they're saying he didn't score last game. Maybe that's, that's the guy. That's risky. That's risky. Okay, is but I, I I think he is very capable. I, I think he had like twenty five or thirty in one game and in the in the first series versus Phoenix, right? I mean, this guy is capable. Mm -hmm. And then you and 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 we know, you know, Big Jelly is more than capable. Okay, so I I don't know what they're going to do on the defensive end, but you're going to have to double him. You're going to have to double Anthony Edwards. That's the first thing. Second. They're going to have to solve this problem with how they're going to attack the double team on the defensive end when Rudy Gobert comes over because they're putting Cat and Nas Reed on the big fella so that they can bring a bigger body to double team him. Because he's playing much faster than I've seen him play in years in the last game. You know, he wasn't playing at a Jokic pace now. The guy's, what, had, I don't know, 30 points or something last game or whatever he had. And we're saying, you know, he didn't have a Jokic-type performance. So I think they're going to have to solve that. They're spacing on the floor. And they're going to have to get an unlikely contribution from someone. Right? They, yeah. They're going to have and, to do and, something. And I think the Nuggets offense has enough wrinkles in it that a lot of the sets that the Timberwolves were clearly scheming and planning to have to defend – there is still multiple options out of that. And we even saw a few of them in the previous game when you go back and watch the game again. We even saw like the traditional play where they have Murray curling off the screen with Jokic and then he throws a lob to Gordon. Well, now if Jamal Murray just attacks off that and the defense is preparing for a Jokic lob to Gordon, there's different wrinkles that they can go at and different options in their offense right. that the Timberwolves, because there's not going to be, usually they can get what they want, right? So they don't have to go to their counters because they're just that good. So if they start going to their cowards, the Timberwolves are going to have to find a way to counteract those as well. And they can figure out something here. But if the Timberwolves win this game, game two, do you think the Nuggets are getting swept? I don't know. No. no, no. You, you, you think they'll win on the road in Minnesota? Listen, listen. Jokic is too good of a player to get swept. Now, you, now let, 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 let me state this. Jokic, it's going to take a superhuman effort to beat him. Now, in the first game, you got that superhuman effort. That Anthony Edwards effort that he brought individually to that team. I, I, well, I, what else more could he do? Now, mm -hmm. the great ones seem to always beat the challenge. Can he do that three more times? Maybe. <laughs> I but I want to watch. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! But I, I'm going to be there to see it. I can tell you that. That's why I was so impressed because the Denver Nuggets, by all accounts, 
Mo, I've watched them now play about what what do they play? They beat the they beat the uh the Lakers, what in six? They beat the Lakers in six, right? In six games. Yeah. Or five. They beat the Lakers. Oh. Is it five or six? No, the Lakers beat them twice, right? The Lakers beat them at home. Um no, they the won Lakers won. Okay, they won four one. Okay. So now we've watched them play six games now. You know what's let's say it. I just gotta say it. I haven't seen Denver play well in six games. In I haven't seen them start a game like they actually want to be there. <laughs> it's like no, the championship yeah, hangover yeah. can't last this long. No, no, Mo, Mo. We said this at the beginning of the year. We recognize the greatness of their starters. Mo, that depth is coming into play because this these were the times where Bruce Brown would come in and he would add a lift to the team. And Jeff Green would come in and he would add a lift to the team. They don't have that now. And that to me, they didn't play well in the Lakers series, but they won because they just had better superior talent as far as Jokic. Jokic could just manipulate the game. Mo, they, they can't just like beat them on just Jokic's talent now. Mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards is matching that. Mm hmm. So now it gets to the others. Well, Nas and uh, Alexander and, and all of these guys, these guys are these are good players, you know? So mm -hmm. if Anthony Edwards and Cat and these guys continue to do what they're doing, it's going to be really hard because, and, and then let's say this too, Mo, because we have to call it like we see it. I don't know the health. Of, of Jamal Murray. I don't know. Yeah, he's not looking good. Okay. And there's no excuse when you play here. But I'm willing to say he is, without question, he's not 100%. No. And I don't know where he's at. He's not making any excuses. I'm not making any excuses. But, Mo, he is a big part of their success, especially now that they don't have the other guys. And, and there was one thing that you and I have questioned all year is someone's going to have to step up for them, and they haven't had that guy. So this isn't anything new with this team. I'm a little concerned because they're winning and they're not playing well, which is always a good sign for a good team. But I I, I think Jokic is going to have a game where he just, you know, he, look, at he'll, he'll, he'll carry a game or two in the series. I think this series is far from over. And I think it's going to take some incredible efforts to beat them. And they got one in game one. I mean, they, that who that, you got that, winning that, game two then? I, I got the I nuggets. got Denver. I got yeah. the Nuggets. Okay. I cool. got the Nuggets coming back. And then let's see what happens in three and four. Yeah. Okay. But Anthony. I'm, Edwards, I'm hoping for seven games of this. I'm not going to lie. I'm yeah, hoping for Anthony, seven games. But I'm going to tell you something Anthony Edwards may not abide by the rules of how you prepare for a series. Anthony Edwards might go for it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, if he has a chance to win it, I have no doubt he's going to go for it. Okay. Yep. That's what you got to love about this young man. And he's capable of doing it, Mo. So yep. I think Jokic and we, you have their attention now. They are the defending world champions. As you know, Mo, you, okay. You, you hit the champ with a good, good hook. He took the champ. He took the blow, but he's the champion. Yep. So he ain't gonna roll over. Yeah, no, no. Jokic is tough. Murray, hey, Murray is tough. Mal Co Coach Malone is gonna have those guys ready. But Anthony Edwards, I think he, hey, Bo, I think he will show up and try it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. And we'll be here every step of the way with you guys. So make sure you subscribe to the show on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Because that's another episode. We had our first game seven of the playoffs, PJ. Always good fun. Hopefully, a few of these second round series go to uh, game seven and the playoffs keep on rolling. Before you know it, we well, come as well. You're going to get some sleep tonight. You, who, you, you're not going to be able to function this week because you're going to go to sleep tonight. I that? mean, I'm, I'm going to go and do a guest appearance on the Light Years podcast with uh, my friends over there. And no doubt I'll find, you know, I've got to edit this show and, and there'll be 101 things to do. BJ, you know, there's always uh, something. There's you know always what? Something. Well, yeah, yeah, it's always something. It's always but something. you know what? But you got a chance to go. You got a chance to go I'm, to sleep. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Anything earlier than like 3 a.m. is an early night for me. So 
We move. No com no comment there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, yeah. I'll catch you in the next one, BJ. Tomorrow's <laughs> night's game shall be good. We've got uh, a okay. we've got a couple of interesting matchups. So uh I'm looking forward to those uh the next series getting underway and the Nuggets trying to fight back. And we'll be back tomorrow morning as well to break it down for all of you guys. So until next time, you guys know the vibes. Get buckets. <laughs>